A few weeks ago, I was trying to send $24.49 of Bitcoin from one wallet to another. And the fee I was quoted by Robinhood Wallet for this transaction was $52.38. Yes, $52 fee to move $24 of Bitcoin on chain from one wallet to another. Completely ridiculous. And I didn't have more than $24 in my wallet, so obviously... I didn't authorize this transaction. And then the funds just sat there for weeks until the transaction fees were low enough that it only consumed, well, only consumed 13% of the total transaction. Eventually, I paid a 13% fee to move my $24 out of the Robinhood wallet. And this was not Robinhood's fault. And when I finally did move the Bitcoin out of the wallet, the congestion on the Bitcoin network caused the block time to take over an hour to be confirmed. That's the first confirmation. Imagine if you were trying to buy a venti latte at Starbucks with Bitcoin and all of these things happened. It's just not going to work. While the Bitcoin transaction fees do vary, recent transaction fee spikes make low value transactions all but impossible. But there is a solution and it's called the Lightning Network. In today's video, I'm going to explain what the Lightning Network is, why it was developed, and how you can use it to reduce your transaction fees to pennies. Let's dive in. The Lightning Network is a second layer protocol built on top of the Bitcoin main chain or blockchain that enables fast, low cost and scalable transactions by conducting most of the transactions off chain and only recording the final settlement values on the main blockchain. The Lightning Network was introduced in 2016 in an effort to help scale the Bitcoin network. And the first transaction was made on it in December of 2017. Specifically, the Lightning Network addresses several limitations of the Bitcoin main chain. The first is scalability. The Bitcoin main chain can only process approximately seven transactions per second due to the fixed block size and long confirmation times. And this fact has led to a tremendous amount of congestion on the Bitcoin network. At the time of recording, there's a backlog of almost a quarter million transactions waiting to be confirmed. And I have seen levels upwards of a half million transactions waiting for confirmation. Here we are at mempool.space, and I'm gonna show you where the transaction backlog is. The blocks, this is a visual representation of the Bitcoin main chain. These blocks over here are filled with transactions waiting for confirmation. And these blocks over here have been confirmed already. And this is the backlog of unconfirmed transactions. This is the number that I've seen close to and even a little bit above a half million transactions. And this is one of the things that leads to high transaction fees on the Bitcoin network. Another limitation of the Bitcoin network that the Lightning Network addresses is transaction speed. If Bitcoin is going to become a viable fiat alternative, transactions will need to have near instant payment confirmation. This is not possible with the Bitcoin main chain network. Transactions on the Lightning Network take place in real time, instantaneously. Another limitation of the Bitcoin network that the Lightning Network addresses are the transaction fees. As use of the Bitcoin network has grown, the transaction fees have grown along with it. And eventually, experts suggest that the transaction fees are going to be upwards of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per transaction, making Bitcoin literally not usable for everyday transactions. And the final limitation that the Lightning Network addresses is the limited privacy of the Bitcoin network. Yes, I know the Bitcoin network is pseudonymous. It's not anonymous, but it is pseudonymous. That is, your name is not associated with a, an address, or is it? All the transactions taking place on the Bitcoin main chain are recorded on the public blockchain for all to see. And if you send Bitcoin from a KYC account on an exchange to one of your wallets, that wallet and that Bitcoin is linked to you forever. Additionally, if you send Bitcoin from your wallet to another person or to an entity, they can see the entire balance of your wallet and any and all future transactions that take place in and out of that wallet. In fact, there are many companies dedicated to figuring out who is who on the Bitcoin network, and they've done an amazing job identifying wallets. And if they can do it, the FBI and the CIA and the NSA can do it even better. That is not super private. 
the Layer 2 Lightning Network technology addresses these limitations with two technologies. Number one, off-chain transactions. The Lightning Network increases Bitcoin's transactional capacity by allowing users to complete an unlimited number of transactions across Lightning channels. Only the opening or closing of these channels, or so-called settlement, is recorded on the Bitcoin main chain. In addition, off-chain transactions allow much higher transaction speeds and near zero fees, as they do not require the computational resources that on-chain transactions require. And the second way the Lightning Network addresses the Bitcoin network limitations is by improving privacy and security. These off-chain transactions provide tremendous privacy compared to on-chain transactions. How many times can I say chain in one video, huh? Well, I hope you're not keeping count. These off-chain transactions are not recorded on the main Bitcoin network. There, I didn't say chain. Again, the only transactions recorded on the main Bitcoin chain or blockchain are the opening and closing of Lightning payment channels. And the Lightning network maintains the security of the Bitcoin network by leveraging the underlying blockchain for final settlement of transactions. This ensures that the off-chain transactions can be trustlessly settled on-chain. So how does the Lightning Network work? The use of the Lightning Network depends on the establishment of a financial relationship between two parties called a payment channel. These payment channels are a financial connection between two nodes or people on the Lightning Network. Once you open a payment channel, computers track the Bitcoin balance of each party in the payment channel and either party can leave the relationship and settle up anytime they want and close the channel. All transactions between entities on the Lightning Network are confidential in that they are not broadcast to the Bitcoin main chain. Only the final balances are recorded on the Bitcoin main chain when the payment channel is closed by one of the two parties. So essentially, Bitcoin from the main chain is moved up onto the Lightning Network. When a channel is opened, transactions take place, and then... When the channel is closed, final settlement is made on the Bitcoin main chain and the Bitcoin is moved back to the main blockchain. The neat thing with the Lightning Network is that you don't need to open a channel with every person you want to interact with. Instead, payments can be routed through different nodes to reach their final destination. So, for example, if Mike wants to make a payment to Jackie, the payment can be routed through the payment channels that they have in common provided those channels have the capacity to carry the payment through. In other words, the payment from Mike could go through their mutual friends, Bob and Marcus, before it ends up in Jackie's wallet. Like a giant mesh network, the computer search for the fastest and cheapest way to route payments from one node to another or person to a person. However, often these payments can fail when they run into a roadblock when the payment channel they want to get across doesn't have enough capacity to carry that payment. This liquidity problem can be overcome through the use of non-custodial lightning hubs, which have a large capacity and many lightning channels. However, these hubs represent a centralized point of failure and can and have become a target for regulators seeking to restrict your monetary freedoms. While the lightning network can offer a viable alternative to the Bitcoin main chain for low-value transactions, it is not without its faults. And I'm not going to go into these today, so you're going to have to subscribe in order to catch that in a future video. I just wanted to show you a visual representation of the, what I think the Lightning Network is all about and how it's designed. In this little picture I developed on Firefly, Adobe Firefly, which is actually a pretty cool site, you should check it out. In this picture, down here is the Bitcoin main chain, and this up here is the Bitcoin Lightning Network on top of and connected to the Bitcoin main chain, but they're separate. So when you open a Lightning Network payment channel, the Bitcoin from the main chain is migrated by opening a channel and the Bitcoin is migrated from the main chain up to the Lightning Network and a payment channel is opened. Right here, we're going to put Bob. That's Bob's payment channel. Here's Marcus's payment channel. Here's Jackie's payment channel. And these are people that have Lightning Network wallets and some Bitcoin in them. And here's another person and another person and another person. So the Lightning Network connects these nodes 
to each other. So if you want to make a payment to this person, you don't necessarily need to have a channel opened between them. What you can do is you can route it through this person and this person and this person over to this person here on the Lightning Network and you haven't even established a channel directly with them. In order to get around limited capacity of some of these channels, because you set the capacity of the channel when you open it with your friend or your ent or an entity, and usually t people do a fairly low capacity channel, but if you wanna run a, a larger payment or even a medium sized payment, it can run into a lot of roadblocks because of the limited capacity. On the Lightning Network, hubs have been developed which have tremendous capacity and a ton of connections. So people are connecting their wallets to the hub and then payments can be run through the hub, but it does create a centralization problem on the Lightning Network, which is not great. So what happens is the, the payments or the, excuse me, the transaction is an opening transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain. The funds are sent up to the Lightning Network and then unlimited number of transactions can take place here. And then once you close the channel between you and a party or an entity or a node, as they're called, then the Bitcoin is moved back to the main chain and another transaction is recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain. That reduces fees and wait times for transactions. And the transactions that occur uh, up here on the Lightning Network can be really low value. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, this is, helps me think about the Lightning Network and understand how it works relative to the Bitcoin main chain. Now let's look at the Lightning Network in action. To do that, I'm going to be using what's called the Moon Wallet. It's a mobile application that's available for download in your respective app stores. The name is spelled M-U-U-N. Let's go ahead and check out the Moon Wallet and we're going to conduct a Lightning Network transaction from an exchange to the Moon Wallet and then from a Moon Wallet either back to an exchange or to another wallet. It's the same thing. Okay, let's take a look. Here we are in the App Store. I just wanted to show you that the Moon Wallet is the application right at the top, M-U-U-N, just search for that. It says open here instead of get because I've downloaded it and go ahead and download that and install it. Now, after you download the Moon Wallet application, go ahead and open it up, go through the security protocol. It is really robust and it's actually quite impressive and I'll see you on the inside. Here we are inside the Moon Wallet. I don't have any funds in here by design. I'm going to move some funds from an exchange and let's go ahead. There are very few settings, which is why I recommend this wallet for new people. You have receive, you have send, and those are the main buttons in the center is your balance, which you can hide if you, if you prefer for privacy. There's a wallet button, which is what we're looking at. There's security settings here. And this is really neat. So when you open your account on the wallet, I would go through all of these securities. I have a iCloud backup. I have an emergency kit. I, it's backed up to my email. Uh, it's really robust and designed for people who are, are new to the crypto world. So you don't lose your crypto. And then there's a few settings right here. And that's about it. It is really simple and easy to use. Let's go back to the wallet. All right, so what we want to do here in the Lightning Network, there are two ways to receive crypto. You can just receive it through an address or you can create what's called an invoice. And when you do that, you specify the amount of Bitcoin in sats or Bitcoin, or you specify the amount of dollars you'd like to receive. So what you do is you click the receive button. And then on the top here, it says Bitcoin or Lightning. You click the Lightning button to receive over the Lightning Network. And there's an address down below, which you can see here. Holy moly, that is really long. And then below that, it says share or copy. We don't want to do that yet. Down here, it says invoice settings. We're going to add a either a Bitcoin or you can pick one of multiple currencies. And right at the top, US, I selected US dollar. We're going to move 25 US dollars from an exchange that has Lightning Network capacity over to this Moon wallet using the Lightning Network. We'll go ahead and confirm the amount to create an invoice. And there is the invoice. That is a different address than I had before. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to go to my exchange app, which I'm going to use River for river.com. And I have a video on that, which you should check out up here. And 
Let's go ahead over to the river application and we're going to paste this address in and see if we can get Bitcoin into the moon wallet over the lightning network. Oh, by the way, in the bottom corner, from lower right, you can see that this invoice expires at 23 hours and 59 min minutes from now. Again, I'm going to copy that address, which I did already. And I'm going to go over to the river application. Okay, here we are in the river app on my phone. And on the bottom, it says transact. What we want to do is we want to send Bitcoin from our brokerage account to, it says BTC address, LN invoice, which is Lightning Network invoice, or Lightning Network URL, or we can scan a QR code. Or you can send with a river link, that's for people without any account. So we're going to send here. Hopefully the paste function will work. Paste that. And there it is. That is the address. I'm going to continue. And look, the amount is built into the address, $24.96. The network fee is $0.05. Cents. Not $52, five cents. Fantastic. So I'm going to send now. That was it. Well, let's go back to the Moon Wallet and see how long it takes to get to get there. Moon Wallet and go to... Oh, it's already there. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why they call it the Lightning Network. It's as fast as your internet connection or your cell phone uh, data can allow. That is really cool. So there it is. Now we're going to send it back to the exchange and see how we do that. We're going to go over to the River app. That was really a good experience. We're going to transact. We're going to receive. Use Lightning. $25. Actually, I'm going to specify the amount of Bitcoin because there was a fee removed. 40572. 40529 Bitcoin. Let's see if we can do that. And let's change, see if we can empty that wallet. And I'm going to share, or I'm going to copy this address, go back to the moon wallet, send, enter text address, paste the address I just copied. Wow, that is some address. Continue, and it might give, yeah, I didn't have enough funds. So I didn't allow any room wiggle room for a fee so we're going to have to try to guess with the fee i'm going to send twenty dollars back i'll we'll go home i'm going to go back to river generate a new invoice update the amount let's try 23 dollars continue share copy press send Enter text address, paste, and that's a different address. Continue, and it looks like it's going to go through. This invoice expires in 60 minutes, and I'm going to send, and it's gone. I still have a dollar left in my account. Let's go back to River and see if that transaction is already there. Wow, that's how fast it goes. Okay, so that was a Lightning Network transaction in action, real time with a few mistakes. Sorry about that. But you, as you can see, the Lightning Network transactions occur like that. It is really cool. And again, I did mention there are quite a few limitations to the Lightning Network. I'll discuss those in a future video. But for now, thumbs up. Really cool. Another alternative and another way to keep your transaction fees low and for you to be able to send small amounts of Bitcoin from your exchange to your wallet, from person to person, or if you find a retailer who will take Bitcoin, you could potentially make a payment using the Lightning Network. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below and I will see you in the next video.